Okay, as uh, since there is no chair at this point, as vice chair, I will call the meeting to order. The select board meeting for Monday, March 11th. It's uh, 5.30. Do we have any changes or additions? I do not. I would like to uh, just make two comments. I'd like to uh, first welcome George Cormier to the board. Thank you. Would you any comments you want to add? I think you can just keep right on going. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess just one other comment that I would make for the public to know, but our town clerk's husband just recently lost his father. Grandfather. Grandfather, thank you. And uh, so if you notice that the town clerk's not around this week, that's why. They're, they're traveling for the funeral and reception. Um, approve the minutes from February 26th. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of February 26th. I'll second. second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from February 26th, 2024? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. New business. Our first new business is to elect a chair. So I'll open this up to the, to the board. Um, I would make a motion to uh, appoint Don McDowell as chair for the ensuing year. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Do we have discussion? Thank you for your motion. Yeah. Thank you for your second. All those in favor? Doesn't sound quite right. But all those in favor of electing uh, Don McDowell as chair of the Morristown Select Board, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Second order of new business to elect a vice chair. I'll open that up to the board as well. I'll make a motion to uh, nominate Chris Plano for vice chair of the Select Board. Do I have a second? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to uh, express my concerns in general about uh, both chair and vice chair. We've had um, years and years of issues with uh, our chairs, name calling and different things. Uh, I'm really hoping that we can uh, change that going forward. Um, Don, I have faith in you that you run a good, clean meeting. Um, but I think we, going forward, I have tremendous concerns. Um, and I will take this from Don. Having last year, it came to my attention that there had been discussion beforehand and that the, the chair and vice chair had already been determined. Uh, if anybody follows it, uh, you know, I was new, um, and you know, I have concerns because at the time the vote was uh, two two, and the deciding vote was the chair voting for themselves. Um, it was a very tumultuous year. <laughs> um, I have concerns with a five member board that, uh, and I will specifically reference the two of you because you have made a very very public. Um, alliance by posting as both the two of you posting repeatedly on front page forum and oftentimes we uh, in a rebuttal uh, against a member and because the quorum is three I have huge concerns uh, and again as, as was expressed to me last year was of seniority and technically I have seniority I'm not asking to be elected however I have tremendous concerns because such an established, you, the two of you have established such an alliance that it really worries me. And if you look at the past votes, this is supposed to be a board of five very independent voices. And yet, if two people publicly go out and constantly uh, promote their alliance, then it's really a board of four. Uh, and there, and I will tell you personally, I feel there has been tremendous pressure to toe the line and to get along. Um, and I don't feel that I was elected to do that. Um, 
I have checked with multiple legal unions, uh, legal people, multiple boards um, who have verified that it is not my job to go along or to support a quorum vote. I have a voice of my own um, and that uh, I feel like uh, it's being stymied continually um, and so much so that people will not even run for the boards. And I feel like this allays, uh, alliance um, is a bad, bad precedent um, because I don't feel like, um, and I, I personally don't feel like Chris is going to be able to handle the power. I think there's already been a sense that the rules don't apply and I've had to several times, you know, I, I was all for Chris coming on board because of your experience and yet I have to repeatedly say this is against open, um, the open meeting laws and because it's felt, you know, that you feel the need to comment and I think it has created very bad feelings. Um, I feel like we, and I come from a, a field of professionals, when you're in the public eye, you have to be able to take criticism and listen to people's opinion and not get defensive. And I do not feel that you have the ability to do that. And I, it's very concerning to me going forward. I would just like to say, first of all, thank you for uh, thinking that I can run a fair and clean meeting. I, I think I can. Number two, um, I don't have an alliance with anybody. I want to make that perfectly clear. Uh, I hope you think, Laura, you've known me for a long time. We've known each other for decades now in a, in a different uh, context and different realm, but you know my, my previous realm. I can certainly think for myself. And um, it may be true that Chris and I agree on a lot, but that doesn't mean we agree on everything. We've had our disagreements, and uh, we haven't made those disagreements public, but they are there. And uh, I think that's that's part of the process. And uh, um, I, I guess I just leave it at that. But I, you, you said a lot. Uh, I just want to take issue with this idea that there's some alliance. Just one more qualifier. Let me just one more. Is it's also again because I deal in marketing. It's the perception that. Uh, of folks that have been reading front page form and who don't attend these meetings is part of my concern. And I think that had a direct effect why people don't want to want to serve on this board. Sorry. No, I think that uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, I will make no apology for adamantly and vehemently supporting the majority of this board's decision. And that's exactly what happened when we were we were speaking to the um, to the media on Porch Forum, uh, News and Citizen. Um, you know, the board makes a decision. I respect that decision, and I will go to the wall to defend that decision and and uh, respond to incorrect information if it's out there. And I will make no apology, and I will make a promise that I will continue to do that. And that can be public record. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, I've been elected twice now within the last six months, um, and I intend to use my brain that God gave me, and I'll use my mouth to support the things that we need to support here and move this community forward. And uh, I take exception to the accusations, Laura. I think they're unfounded. I think it's a bunch of hyperbole, and um, I think we need to move on. We think what? Uh, we need to move on. Yeah, well, I just want to. Yeah. Any other discussion? Don, can I make a comment? <laughs> Don, I just want to give the board. Yeah, I am Sue Retro, sorry. Yeah. I feel that we need to act as a cohesive unit um, and respond to the, the misinformation that's on the front porch forum. <coughs> so that, uh, Chris has done a good job at um, letting people know what the real facts are and the real numbers are out there. And I think that his opinion. Is is he's trying to do what's best for our community? I know I've had conversations with Don, and Don and I definitely don't agree on things like Chris and I don't agree on things, but I don't think that Chris would is going to do anything bad to our to our border to our town. Any other comments?
comments on from the board? No, I, but this is something that is <clears throat> in past and hopefully not going forward to the future. And then I'll reserve comment until I have a little more experience. Okay. Okay. I just want to say this real quick. Too. I meant to say this earlier, Jamie, but. Um, Two minutes. Be nice. Yes. Be kind. Yes. If you don't want to, I speak gonna, to you. I am going to say this. <laughs> When the public does uh, come up to the microphone, if you could please address your comments to the chair and not to other members of the board nor members of the public. <coughs> and uh, you can introduce yourself, that would be great. And we will give you two minutes. And after everyone else has had a chance to speak, you'll get an additional two minutes. We'll take two minutes. Uh, James Brewster, um, I would just like to suggest, recommend um, that over the course of this next year, I don't know how it happens, but for this board to consider a rotating chair person uh, for this board so that no one person is continuing to be in the role as chair year after year after year. Um, I don't know how that happens because obviously next year, probably going to be a different board, um, but something to think about. Um, I believe the trustees may do it, um, but uh, I think there's some value in that. Thank you, Jamie. Can I just ask a question, Jamie? Are you talking about um, like basically um, a term limit for the for the chairs? Is that what you're talking about, or are you talking about specifically rotating it out this year? I'm saying rotate it every year. So you know, honest, this year, year yeah. next year it would be somebody else. Yeah. For sake of argument, you could say the next person is going. You know, base it on tenure on the board based upon your election date. So, so that's something like that, right? By definition, it has been discussed. Yeah, yeah just, a, just a thought. Figured, you know, get it all ready. Isn't that considered a term? Yeah. Yeah. Tony Coney, Coney Hill. So, Don, I get to talk to you head on now. Okay. I've been waiting for that. <laughs> so, just so you guys all know, Tom and I do have, I'm right in his back pocket, okay? <laughs> just so you know that. Yeah. I think it's really time for all you guys to push the restart button. We got George here, okay? And let's, let's push the restart button. And the main thing is, is you guys need to start listening to the taxpayers. You really do, because you only won that vote by 21 votes. It's not going to be so easy next year. Think about it. Thank you, Tony. Okay. No running, Don. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm Molly Pease, and I'm here um, to represent perhaps have nots uh, of our community. And I had a a couple interactions with many of you um, that have gone very nicely. Um, and then I've had some with, that were not. Um, I asked a question about the budget uh, before the town meeting vote, and one member was very salty in their response. And another member spent an hour and a half on the phone of their time to discuss my concerns. And I feel that the vote was very close uh, to pass that budget. And I would like to see someone who voted on the other side of it. Um, I, I would like to recommend that perhaps Laura Streets, who is the second uh, longest member on this board, be considered as vice chair to give the folks um, that voted against it perhaps a voice on this sport. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Bye. See the other discussion. Okay. Board win. So we have a motion to elect Chris Palermo as vice chair of the Morristown Select Board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm staying. Opposed? Nay. Oh. 
That would be three to one. There's a hand up up there. No, that's my mouse. Oh, get your mouse out of there. Sorry. Okay, next under new business, to select or to set the regular meeting schedule. In the past, we've done the first and third Monday of every month as our uh, regular select board meetings. I guess I would suggest we continue to do the same as, again, discussion. Yeah, you know, um, a member of the public had talked to me a little bit before the meeting and wanted to know because of, the, I guess, a conflict with the school board meeting, uh, whether the select board would contemplate doing a second and fourth brief, or the, uh, second and fourth Monday in the month. Um, I don't know if you'd like to speak to that at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jason Kelly, Morrisville resident. Uh, just the school board meets the same night you guys do at the exact same time. <clears throat> so it's not very transparent to us with both meetings. Yeah. But you were the first ones to have a meeting, so I wasn't able to ask the school board. <laughs> Their special meeting was at noon today. Everyone works at noon, so I couldn't make that meeting to ask them. As far as you know, Jason, is there any particular reason they go Monday and Wednesday? I don't know. They, no, they only go one, they only go third Monday of the month. So it's one month. One, one meeting. One a month. Yeah. Oh, okay. If it doesn't occur here, I'm going to ask up there too. So and I'm going to push one, one way or the other. And the trustees meet on Wednesdays, right? So that's that's yeah. what I recommend, yeah. They were asking us to meet the second and third. Second and fourth. Second and fourth. Just something off in the school schedule. Like uh -huh. That way we can, uh -huh. I mean, it's two big budgets. It's something major yeah. in the town. No, I agree. I think and that's what we have to choose between the two. It's kind of, you know, it's not very fair to the residents to have to choose what they're going to go. Is there any talk about this too? Is there any business that we have to take care of before the second Monday of the month? Is there anything that we have to? to no, we can have them on the second and fourth. I mean, there's no pressing bills or anything that. <coughs> you no, know, we just have to have them regularly so that I don't have a big gap in between warrants. Yeah. So right now, Jason, the conflict is one one of the Mondays a month. Correct. I I don't know I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but rather than changing right now, maybe asking Carrie to sit down with Ryan and just see if there's an easy solution to this, rather than maybe they trying to make that decision right now. Maybe they change their one meeting a month to another day. I mean, that would be my suggestion, just to, rather than throwing the uh, baby out. With the... So just because if we were to decide to do the first and third today, then we could change it down the road. We don't, we're not necessarily committed to this because we said it's tonight. So yeah, I think we could change it to the next meeting. I think that makes good sense if we can see if the school board's one. So continue with the first and third and have Kim talk to Ryan here. I would say so. Yeah, I think we should have a conversation with Ryan just to see, because we've been doing We've had ours for a long time. I'm sure they have to, but one meeting is easier to do than two. Jason, what time does that meeting start? 5 30. 5 30. Okay. Same time. Yeah. Do you That's need a motion time. for this tonight? For um, we were looking for it as you would just once a year. Um, you can hold it. You can hold off on making that decision. Why don't we do that? Yeah. You want to table this? Yeah, table table. It. Let us uh, have a conversation with the school board uh, or with the superintendent's office and okay. we'll come and visit. We can put this right back on the agenda for next Monday. We have a meeting yeah. on the 18th. We do. Yeah. Okay. That will mean we'll hold up okay. we'll hold up the posting, the next it says set the locations for the posting, which we can do, but we can do we yeah. won't do the posting yeah. until we resolve whatever the Well we're gonna are. meet next week here. Um, as the third Monday, right. and we don't post until the week yeah. before. Then. Yeah, interestingly, we're off schedule tonight, but that's because we are last week. Okay, number four, set locations for posting meeting notices. Um, what we've done in the past, it's my understanding, is that we've posted at the website on our town website, and we've, we've posted in the town window out front. And we've also posted at the post office, USPS post office. Mm -hmm. And statutorily, that's what we need to do. Now, we've posted in other places as well. But those are the three official sites that we have, we have used in the past. And a lot of money to 
Water light is an additional one that we, we don't mm -hmm. need to do. The library is an additional one. And uh, we've been on front porch for them as well. Right. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to um, set the location uh, meeting notices on our town website, uh, on the town hall message board, and in the post office. And um, we can certainly continue to um, go the extra mile by putting in a wire and light on the porch form. We only need to do three. Three. So it would be the website, the town hall message board, and the post office. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. A second by Richard. Discussion? Okay. Seeing no discussion, so no questions. Uh, the motion is to use the town website, the town window out front, and the uh, post office across the street as our three official sites for posting meeting notices. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it will be unanimous to the town's newspaper of record. <coughs> I nearly said the transcript, but I didn't. That would be the News and Citizen. Yeah, I would make a motion to um, uh, post News and Citizen as the uh, paper of record. Got a second. Second that. Discussion? All those in favor of using the News and Citizen as our official town newspaper of record? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That would be unanimous as well. Town appointments. Uh, inside your packet we have a number of appointments that we are responsible for. And I guess I, we, we could take a motion for the slate, but I'm not sure how the board wants to uh, Before we do that, I just have one note. I I will would like to add um, the Royal County Planning Commission regional planning. Although the terms aren't up until the summer, it's it's customary and it avoids us forgetting um, in the middle of the summer. But I'd like to appoint a rep to regional planning. So that would be under boards and council. Right. Well, town appointments. Those are um, appointments to boards outside the municipality itself okay, in, in so. my mind but I think either one would work but um, and also LCPC has a TAC of Trans Transportation Advisory Committee that we also appoint people to one of the um, participants Jerry is here has said he would like to be reappointed to that um, Martin's here as well oh is he yeah right oh, there he is um, mm -hmm. and Judy is Judy Bickford is the regional regional rep said she would like to stay on if no have her. Um, her term isn't up until the summertime though. And Dan McLaughlin also is on your channel. So LCPC we have Judy Schaefer. Yep. And Dan McLaughlin. Yes. And these are all one year terms? They are. They are. <clears throat> and for transportation committee that would be Jerry Throne. Yes. And only Jared? No. no. Martin. Martin. Sorry. Green. Is there a process um, to see if anyone is interested in serving in any of these boards? Um, what is the process, I should say? Uh, um, it's been fairly informal. Judy's kind of um, put things out on social media and our website. Um, occasionally we've put ads out. I hear in the past, did not do that in the last two weeks, but. Um, and also, Judy reaches out to each individual board member um, and asks if they would like. Well, I say Judy and I think Todd reached Todd. out to DRB and, P and Planning Commission, but um, so they reach out to their respective boards and say, "You're up. Would you like to be renewed?" So um, that's where. I'm it. just I'm just curious. <clears throat> so the public are aware that these were being voted on. Or uh, I'm just curious mm -hmm. if. If people are aware, care. <laughs> I mean, they're done every year at this time, and it yeah. was on the agenda. But in the like next year, if you think there should be an ad, we could always put an ad out. Um, it's hard to figure out where people are getting their information these days. Yeah, to get it through a mix of, <clears throat> of things. Again, this is an unusual year that we have. You know, uh, Judy Bigford's on planning, regional planning, 
uh, and yet she's no longer on this board. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that... It's not, I mean, it seems a little unusual because she just got off the board, but often we, we do have members that aren't select board members. You don't have to be a select right. board member to be right. in there. And Dan McLaughlin's not a select board right. member. Right, I agree. Um, so before I read this list, I, I think mm -hmm. it would behoove me to read the list so everyone knows who we're talking about. Yes. We have reached out to everyone on this list and they are willing. I have reached out to Charles Cooley. Abby, of course, works here. Um, Lamoille Kennels. Uh, Dennis Smith and Joy are our presidents of the cemetery. Dwayne Sprague um, does not want to do it this year. Brent Tillian. Frank Sladek, and then Todd reached out to the Planning Council and the DRB, and then Conservation Commission. I reached out to Jerry Throne and Pamela Stanion. So for so Lamoille Regional Solid Waste, Charles mm -hmm. Cooley, mm -hmm. he's okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Emergency Management Director, do we have somebody there? Um, um, the Police Chief. Jason I thought we had, that was, had been changed. So that would be Jason. Mm -hmm. I just want to get all these names out there before. If there is a motion to vote the slate, mm -hmm. uh, emergency 911 coordinator is Abby Graves, who's one of the employees here in the town office. Pound keeper would be Lamoille Kennels. For clarification, though, what we found out late Friday was we don't have to actually identify a pound okay. legally, and we don't need a fence viewer either. Okay. Since as long as I've done this, which is about 19 and a half years, I've never used a fence viewer. We use other things to dispute, to settle disputes between neighbors. Okay. Agent to convey would be... Can I just ask about the pound keeper? Is, um, is that universal or is that because we now officially have a, a an appointed um, dog catcher, if you will? Uh, that's more or less VLCT saying we don't need to have it anymore. We, I mean, I still need okay. to... Um, I'm going to get in, enter a contract with a pack of, you don't really call them the pound anymore, no, but a kennel. No. Um, I was just so, curious where that came from. Is that is that an old the pound keeper's It name? sure is, yes. Okay. Something that's been. I don't know what year, probably the circa Colt Way or it's, Coal, too. It's out of date. Yes. Thank you. To continue, agent to convey would be Chris Young and Dennis Smith. No, Chris Young. No, Chris Young. No, Chris Young. Sorry. Contract. Said that. <laughs> Real estate. Uh, cemetery lots, Joy Marshall, fence viewer, we said Dwayne we did not want to do that. Well, we don't need one anymore. And we don't need one anymore. Yeah. Green up coordinator would be Brent mm -hmm. uh, Teon, tree warden would be Fran Sladek, LCPC would be Judy Bickford and Dan McLaughlin, transportation committee would be Jerry Throne and Martin Green, planning council would be Josh Goldstein. I, do you want me to? I'm going to read them all and mm -hmm. you guys can decide what kind of a motion you want to put forward. Uh, planning Council would be Josh Goldstein, Planning Council Jamie Morris, DRB Development Review Board, in other words, Gary Nolan, Development Review Board, Mary Ann Wilson, Conservation Commission, Jerry Crow, Conservation Commission, Pamela uh, Stan, Oil Fiber uh, CUD Representative Jane Campbell with alternate John Meyer. And the Lamont County Flood Recovery and Resiliency, we, we don't need an appointment for these three, so. Correct. We're forwarding the three names, Gary Nolan, Tom Cloutier, and yourself, um, but it's not an official appointment. So I would entertain a motion for everything above Lamont County Flood Recovery and Resiliency meeting. If you want to do it all at once, or if you want to break it up, we can do that. Um, Let's do the town appointments and then we'll do the board. Okay. Council. So, we, so I would make a motion to appoint Charles Cooley to a Royal Regional Solid Waste, Jason Luno, Emergency Management Director, Abby Griggs, the E911 e Coordinator, Agent to Convey Real Estate for Cemetery Lots, Dennis Smith and Joy Marshall, uh, Green Up Day Coordinator, Brent Tayon, uh, Tree Warden, Rand Slack. LCPC, uh, Judy Bickford and Dan McLaughlin, uh, Transportation Committee, uh, Jerry Throne and Martin Green. I'll so second that. I have a second. So I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Mm -hmm. um, the um, Planning Council and Developmental Review Board 
Is it not normal to get a, a recommendation from the uh, boards? It, it, we may discuss that in just a second, but that's okay. not germane to the current motion, but I think okay. that's coming that's, up. I, I was, it's coming up next. Okay. I will hold on. So given the motion for town appointments, are there any discussions there? Any discussion there? The only other thing that will probably come to us uh, down the road is, is that uh, Michael Buchanan, <clears throat> who uh, was recently interviewed and uh, has been offered a contract to be the new sexton for the cemeteries for both Pleasant View and Morristown Town Cemeteries. Um, he's uh, he's a hydro operator for Morrisville Water and Light, and he used to work for the town as well. EPW as a tech too. He's agreed to take on the sexton's role. So at some point uh, after that contract is signed, um, we'll want to add him to the agent to convey real estate because he will add, most likely be the one that will be contracting with families to sell uh, burial lots in all the cemeteries. But he is not part of this motion right now. He is not. This is FYI for conversation. And I have one more question. With, uh, we did not mention the Morrisville Developmental Fund. Does that need to be on here? Not on the consent yet. It hasn't really gone anywhere yet. I was I talked to the town attorney about that, and I think your permanent manager should start pushing I, that forward. Yeah, I'm working on it. I can tell you where it is. I just wasn't sure as far as the scheme of Oh, okay. Yeah, more there, things are coming as far as if anyone's up for Okay, that's fine. There. Nobody's up for me. Yeah, it's fine. just it's fine. Fine. Thank you. Any other discussion? It's okay with the board. I'm not going to reread the entire motion. <laughs> All those in favor as the motion is presented. Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Board councils. So one of, the, one of the questions that I asked um, uh, a while ago and sort of revisited is, um, you know, Josh Goldstein is a, is a member of the Planning Council, and um, I had talked with Judy Alberi um, about the posting of these positions in general, and Judy um, has, uh, and she can speak for herself tonight, but I, uh, to sort of paraphrase, she has put out in the public um, and, you know, to see if anybody was interested in serving on any of these boards. Um, there was one individual that had shown, I think, some initial interest, but has, I guess, at this point been non-responsive uh, moving forward. Um, as part of our um, packet, I think you'll see in here um, uh, a subordinate board uh, protocol. Um, they uh, a non-resident certainly can. Um, I think it was adopted in May of 2022. Can serve on uh, these boards. I think Josh has been on the board for a period of time. This is a four-year appointment. Um, my interaction with him has been very good um, in terms of participation from select board meetings. But anyways, the real point of this is, is that I reached out to see if there was interest within the community, the community council, and it would be nice to have a resident uh, be a part of that if they were interested. Um, but apparently, um, Josh is the one person that was, um, has uh, requested to remain on the council. And in anticipation of, of, this, uh, of this consideration about Josh being a non-resident, it, it was May 4th of 2022 that this board adopted um, a policy, and I'll just read it that in part, this isn't the entire policy, but all existing members of jointly appointed subordinate boards and the Planning Commission on the DRB are jointly appointed subordinate boards. As of May 4th, 2022, are grandfathered from this new residency requirement. The new residency requirement was that if we're going to appoint new members to those boards, that they need to be residents of Morristown. Said members, regardless of existing or future residency, may continue to serve on said boards and shall remain eligible to be reappointed thereto upon the expiration of their current term. So we do have a policy in place that does allow for Josh to, to stay on. And I'll just also further add that we have on the DRB a member who is not um, 
That is not a resident of Morrisville. I know one member of the uh, public has reached out to me, reached out to me about a month ago in regards to this topic, and um, that person knows, and this person being me knows that I wasn't, you know, I, I was one that pushed for residency. Many of you in this room have, have heard me say that, that residency is important. Um, however, this is this is the policy that the board passed, and I'm not going to challenge past policy. I'm going to abide by past policy, but I, I do want to reiterate that uh, I think, you know, going forward, you know, we need residents on these boards. But, and I'll also say that I did reach out to Todd Thomas, and uh, Josh has been a very active member of the planning council. Um, he's uh, he's attended meetings very very consistently, consistently, and uh, I, I I heard nothing but positive from him, about him from other individuals that have been involved in DRD and, and the planning council directly involved in this group. So for that reason, I would support his continuation on the planning council. But, um, I actually was on DRB and uh, so had a lot of interactions with Josh and was uh, an opponent to this current uh, zoning, however it is in place. And I would have to say, uh, Josh has always been highly invested in this community um, and he was a pleasure to work with. Um, and given the current zoning that he is grandfathered, I would certainly highly recommend um, his uh, continuation. So, Josh's last name. Goldstein. Goldstein. Yes. Yeah. Are you interested I, in the motion? I, I would be interested in the motion, if nothing else, to continue discussion. I would move to appoint um, Joshua Goldstein to the Planning Council, Jamie Morris to the Planning Council. Gary Nolan to the Development Review Board, Mary Ann Wilson to the De Development Review Board, Jerry Throne to the Conservation Commission, and Pamela Stan Stanion to the Conservation Commission, and uh, Jane Campbell with alternate John Meyer to the Loyal Fibernet CUD representatives. <coughs> Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Laura. Uh, comments from the board? I need one. I made mine. You both made mine. Okay. That's my name. James Brewster. Um, so I'm the one that stirred the pot on this one, and I think you're all aware, except for George, because he wouldn't receive the email at that time. Um, I brought this to the attention um, that uh, Josh Goldstein's uh, appointment was up. Um, I'm a firm believer that these are not lifelong appointments, although I think sometimes they are treated as such. Um, so I appreciate you folks doing your due diligence in looking into this. Uh, however, I do continue to, to disagree with you. Um, I am, it is unclear to me why uh, Mr. Goldstein uh, chooses to serve on the Morristown uh, Planning Council uh, as opposed to his own planning commission uh, in the town of Wolken. Um, I think you'd want to have, you know, you want to be affecting change in your own town, um, but that's up to him. Um, and I guess I'll make one additional comment. This comes from uh, the minutes uh, from a recent uh, planning council meeting where it says that uh, Mr. Mr. Goldstein preferred having a five council member board um, as opposed to seven because a five member board makes for shorter debate and creates quicker consensus. And in my opinion, that's not what this town needs. This town does not need less debate and it does not need faster decision making, especially when it comes to develop, uh, planning issues, what's going on around town. Um, as I mentioned in some previous meeting, after the budget, planning and development is the next hot button item here. So shorter discussions, faster consensus, that's not what we need. And if that is the impression, if that is the viewpoint of a council member, I'm not sure if that's what I want on my planning council. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, uh, Tom, uh, I, I'll 
always go to the planning council meetings and the DIBs and the these, as you probably know. And at every meeting at the planning council, that Josh has been there. He always has come prepared. He's always become knowledgeable of the subjects. He always has great input and he cares a lot about this town. Now, whether you want to change that policy or not, and, and, and that's of course up to you, but for right now, I don't know anybody that could replace him and, and serve better, do a better job than that fellow is doing right now. And uh, he'll fall over in his chair here because we certainly don't see eye to eye. But, but, uh, but whatever he does say, he backs it up with the knowledge and for reasons why he does so. And that's why I, I think he's, he's doing a good job. And uh, we would be hard pressed to replace him. Thank you. Julianne, okay. no, it's okay. I have a question. Oh, yeah. It's clear that nobody, um, nobody uh, wanted has applied for this position, correct? You're asking me? Yes. So, I'm Judy Alberry, Executive Assistant. So, um, I sent out, I put an ad on Front Porch Forum, and I sent out um, looking for folks interested. We had four applicants back in December because planning council needed to fill a position. Mm -hmm. I reached out to those four applicants. Uh, one of them was appointed, so that left three. I reached mm -hmm. out to them. Uh, one of them is just not ready to right now. The other one uh, didn't respond, and another one has not responded. So okay. there's two that have not responded, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Judy. Anybody else? Are you good? Yeah, no, Judy pretty much filled in what I was. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? <clears throat> okay, so all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That would be unanimous. Let's see, I would take a motion to. I would move to recess. So a select board meeting and open as the board of liquor and tobacco control. There's a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor of recessing the select board meeting and opening the board of liquor and tobacco control. Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. We have. We should do the liquor licenses first. Sure, that's how Sarah prepared your report. And we have four of them. And do we have any concerns from public safety? We do not. He confirmed uh, in writing. Okay, so I would entertain a motion then. I would move to approve the liquor license for KPH Drugs Inc. for the business's key drugs for a second class license. Martin's Foods of South Burlington LLC, and business is Hannaford, uh, second class license. Uh, the VFW, Royal County Post 9653, uh, first class, third class, and outside consumption. Copley Golf Corporation, um, a third class, and outside consumption. Do I have a second? I'll second. A second by Laura, a motion by Chris. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That would be unanimous. Do I have a motion for tobacco license renewals? I make a motion to approve the tobacco license for Global Montello Group Corp. doing business as Jiffy Mart number 686 for a tobacco substitute endorsement and then higher elevation uh, located in uh, Northgate Plaza for tobacco and tobacco substitute, substitute endorsement. Do I have a second? Question. Just for my... Do I have a second first? Oh, sorry. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Chris. Go ahead, George. I'm sorry, my apologies. Uh, just so I can have the definition of a tobacco substitute. My guess is it's a baby. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Good question. It's been asked multiple times before. Yeah. Is that correct? I believe that's my impression of it as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all those in any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? 
Opposed? Unanimous. I move to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control meeting. Second motion to adjourn the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. And? Move to reconvene the selection. Motion to reconvene. Second. Second. Motion by Chris, second by Richard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we are back in select board, in the select board meeting. Can I get uh, one second, please? I just need clarification because I, I got distracted for a moment. Uh, adjourn Board of Liquor and Tobacco. I've got Chris's uh, motion. Richard, did you second to adjourn Liquor and Tobacco? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I need. Thank you. Old business? I don't have any at this point. Um, I didn't prepare anything. I will say at our last meeting, we had questions about Gulch Road. Um, and we're planning, Judy and I are planning to do just one meeting a month, an update on that process. Because then, now in a, a stroke of great luck, it's not just luck, but uh, FEMA will cover that. No, so good. now they are the ones that we have to get permission for before we can order it. We had been working with permitting and an engineer on um, designing it. Um, but that's good news. It's just that another couple that came in tonight were, was going to ask about it. So if anyone asks you about the status of that, we're planning to do uh, some sort of update. Now, some of it might mean that there was no progress because FEMA works like that, but we're still pushing to have it have it done this year. Good. It's my understanding that FEMA reimbursement could be as much as 75%. Correct. With additional monies from the state as well? Yes. Yeah, that's and it's significant years. because the first estimates on that culvert when we did the second plan, which was less expensive, was $500,000. Yeah. So it's um, it's significant. Okay. Well, that's, that is good news. I know it won't be quick enough for the people that use Gelt's Road on a regular basis, but um, it's good news. Any other old business? Okay, warrants. Do we have warrants? Yeah, I yes. move to approve the warrants. So I have a motion to approve the warrants, so I have a second. Second. I have a second by Richard, motion by Chris. Any discussion? Just they need to be passed down. That's yeah. somebody's going to be missed. All those in favor of approving the warrant? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous as well. Okay. Community comments. Do we have any community comments? Come on up, Jim. James Brewster, uh, full of suggestions tonight. Sorry. Um, about this time last year, uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion and go around about the rules of procedure for this board. Um, and I don't know whether that's something that gets done annually or whether that was a one time thing from now till you guys decide to make a change. Um, my suggestion uh, is to take another look at that and just go back to straight up Robert's rules. Uh, what this board operates under now is uh, Robert's rules with a bunch of weird bolt-on stuff that the body at that time felt needed to be in there. Um, and I think it would be a lot cleaner and easier for you folks, for the public, uh, if you just went by straight up Robert's rules. Okay. So that's just a suggestion, thanks. I'm, I'm scanning this really quickly, Jamie, and I do not see anything on here that suggests how long this policy Yeah, I can't remember. Go. I don't even remember why it came up last year, but it, there was a lot of back and forth and laborious discussions <laughs> on something that didn't But it seems like it, as it's written now, it would go forward for, Ever? for I perpetuity, that. but I can't imagine. But it could. I believe could. the conversation has always been about the community comments. Uh, was that not a conversation about rules and procedures of uh, community comments? There was discussion about putting it in the first, and there was. Oh, it may have been part of that. I don't remember, but I know that here th there was Robert's rules, and then, or I think initially there may have been this long list that what isn't, what isn't, was not even Robert's rules as to what were the rules of procedure that may have come from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Yeah. And I think it just makes a lot more sense to be like, let's use what is known and what's right. out there. 
Robert's Rules. It's pretty cut and dry. You know, people can reference it. They can look it up. Uh, right now, I wouldn't even know where to go to find the procedures for this board. I'm sure it's somewhere on the website. But if I knew it was Robert's Rules, I wouldn't have to go to the town's website. I could just Google Robert's Rules and figure it out. Yeah. And I think we hold every other meeting in town by Robert's Rules. And it was, it was May 15th last year that we did pass these, um, these rules of procedure. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So before the new manager comes in, I don't know when that is. I soon I hear. Uh, is there any way that this board can discuss our highway department? Our highways and byways and back roads are in disarray all over, not just Cody Hill. And I know it's mud season and I'm not referencing mud season at all. I don't care what happened three weeks ago and I don't care what happens a month, a month from now. The roads in Morristown are in disarray and they need to be fixed. For a $3 million budget, we're not getting what we pay for. And I think this board right here shouldn't put it on the new town manager. It's not fair to the new town manager. It's not fair to you. I've been up here for a lot of years saying this. It's time they get fixed with that much money. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Tony, you can. Tony, define the word disarray. What, 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 is it, what, is, what does that mean to you? You don't have to travel far to put your car in, in harm's way to the, to the passenger side or the, or the other side of the road. None of the roads are getting ditched. I can take you down Stagecoach Road. I travel it every day in the morning. I can travel a quarter mile the ditches are full of trees. The water's not running down there correctly. There's no ditching going on. There's no crowns in the roads. There's potholes all over. And I was told that Kevin measures them at two inches. If they're, not, if, they're, if they're less than two inches, they don't get filled. I don't know if that's true or not, but come on. Why am I concerned, Chris? You know why. Address me, please. I got $100,000 worth of classic cars and I put them in potholes. I shouldn't have to do that from Cody Hill to the village. It pisses me off, okay? And I'm not done. All you guys got to do is address it. You're not addressing it. So just in we, 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 have, we have 14 employees. What did they do all winter? I don't know what they did. The winter was pretty easy, but the ditches are still full of trees, weeds. There, you don't ever see a backhoe ditching. I don't know what Mud City Loop is right, but I know what Cody Hill is like, and the water's running right down the middle of the road. Now you take a $50,000 car that you don't want to get all full of shit, excuse my language, and you, and you, can't, you don't know which way to go, okay? not fair to me I can tell you that so I just want to I want to have a simple civil solution what are we going to do about this that's all okay. thank I've you I've talked to you many times Don and I don't get no have. results and I know you're, you're only one man but I think it needs to go on the agenda we need to know what the problem is I just uh, my only response Tony is there you're right you and I have talked a lot Kevin and I Superintendent of Roads have talked a lot, and um, it's it's not fair to suggest that these, and I believe it's 12 employees in the highway department, not 14 right now, but I don't think it's fair at all to suggest that uh, they're not out there doing the work. I have, I have a truck going by my house every morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock, all winter long. You're right, it's been an easier winter, but there's still ice on the road every morning and they're still sanding and they're still sanding. They're still out there. Uh, I am hoping, I, I gave you a chance to talk. I didn't interrupt you. And uh, 
we're, we're all kind of hoping in the end that, yeah, there will be some savings in the highway department, but I, I'm, I'm not going to let anyone suggest that these guys aren't, aren't working. I know they're working. I know they're out there doing lots of, uh, lots of what needs to be done. Um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. There, there is a lot to be done and we're hoping 2024 will be a great year to get a lot of the work done that we need to get done. Are we going to get it all done in 2024? Absolutely not. We've got a bridge on Geltz Road that we've got to take care of now. We've got a bridge on Walton Road that's been on hold now for two years. The voters two years ago appropriated the money or okayed the appropriation of that money to fix that bridge. Um, I, I know what it's like going up to my house and uh, it, 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 we've had, what's this? Is this the sixth mud season this year? I mean, we, we're, this is, uh, it's odd times. I appreciate you for not talking about the past, but this summer, let's just hope the weather cooperates and let's hope that this, you know, the summer gives us an opportunity for these guys to get out there and do the work that they need to do. So I just, I want to reiterate, as we're starting a new year, my understanding from BCLT is that in community concerns, unless a community member asks a question that we legally cannot start a discussion because discussions have to be agenda items. So the way I understand okay. this is that Tony is technically asking for an agenda item. I just think we're going down a slippery slope. We've worked very hard to get away and I, I think I probably violated it earlier too. So it's um, for anyone who cares, they are actually reviewing the open meeting laws um, down at the state. But I think I just want us all to be very careful um, that we um, thank you, Laura. Community comments You're, or community comments, not discussions. Not thank you. I just felt like yeah, I understand if the that. chair is addressed, I just felt like the chair probably has an obligation to at least defend in part the employees that are working for this town. But I but I hear now? but I but I hear what you're saying. You have one more opportunity to speak if you'd like. I just want you to know if everything was ditched properly. These bridges and all this stuff probably wouldn't wash out. There's you, you, you know, it's not hard to see, Don, and I'm pretty sure you see it as it was as well as I do. If something's ditched properly, the water runs where it's supposed to run. It doesn't run down the center of the road. And this has been happening year after year after year. It's been happening ever since we've lost other people on the town highway department and I'm not naming any names. Thank you, Tony. I'm going to be brave. Sheila Tarbox, I want to add to that because Tony asked seven years ago about ditching the roads, not just on Cody Hill everywhere. You guys ought to come up Cody Hill and all the other roads and start looking in the ditches. I walk it almost every day and I took a lot of pictures of the culverts up there and they're almost all full of water and two of them are completely plugged. Where's the water going on the road? In fact, I was told the other day by Alan Ward that one of our culverts is completely plugged and doesn't even exist up there anymore. I can hear it. Can't see it. No open holes. I know you have a lot of work to do, but seven years is a long time to wait to get something ditched. Thank, Thank you, you, Sheila. Go ahead, Mr. Cloutier. On a bright note for a minute and a half, my name is Tom Cloutier. Chris, I want to congratulate you on your, your new election into the board. And Joe, I'd like to welcome you to the board. Thank you. And I hope you feel like you want to be on this board a year from now. But, uh, but now to get to my point, I went to the school board meeting today, it was on Zoom, and they discussed what they're going to do, because we all know their board failed. You are 31 votes away from this budget failing. The townsfolk are sending a message. And I hope and I hope that you hear that message. Because if you don't, we are going down a very dark road. 
They don't want any more taxes. They're taxed up to here. For God's sakes, we failed a school budget that does not affect potholes, ditches, or anything. It affects our children. It affects your children, your grandchildren. The voters that spoke, 20, 31 votes, and you'd be worried here too. You're gonna, the, the point that made in today's school board meeting was they're gonna have to do drastic changes on how they come up with budgets. Some drastic ideas were, were put out. I'm not gonna go into this, up to them to do that. They don't see a way out of it unless they do something like that. They're gonna have to do to get the, the past votes. What they're doing is dropping the position. In other words, the students in the school here are gonna have one less adult in that schoolroom for your children and grandchildren. That's what's gonna happen this year. What's gonna happen next year if they don't make any changes? We don't know. We're at a very, very dangerous time. This board has got to change the way they do budgets. Some very hard choices are gonna have to be made. Very hard choices. And it's up to you to do them because the people have spoken very loud. The town is split down the middle. It's your job <clears throat> to unite this town. How you do that? We thought we could start last year if it didn't work. But right now, if you cannot see that this town is 50-50, then you're missing the ball. And we are overtaxed. That's all. Thank you, Tom. IPad. Who, I can't read that. Kathy Carly's iPad. Carly's uh, iPad. That's Kathy is that iPad. Kathy? Kathy Chafee? Yeah. Hi, Kathy Chafee. Um, can't so. hear you yet. Oh. Uh, can you hear us? That might be me. So before we only look at one setting. Can you hear me? Kathy, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up. Can you hear me? Huh. Oh, yeah, we got you now. <laughs> hey, Kathy. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, just a couple of things. When um, our roads, um, all you have to do is come down Congress Street. I think we did have some, maybe some water issues there, water main breaks, but there's two huge big squares and you cannot stay in your side of the road. You got to go one way or the other. Coming from the hospital, the whole right hand side of the road is just about filled with potholes. So it's just not those issues that, that we've had this winter. Um, second of all, um, I, you don't need to answer any of these. Um, second of all, Don, I wish I had you for a boss because you support everybody. And I'm, I'm glad that you do. I really am. But you even support, and it was in the paper last week where Todd Thomas went against your board of getting into the um, out Lamoille County planning, that he was, he's against it. Um, that should not happen. That should not be public. If he wants to feel that way, that should be left to himself. It does not look good for him or the board. Um, secondly, or thirdly, Friday morning, last Friday morning, 5.30 in the morning, I had the scanner on, road crew's talking. I hear the road crew talking back and forth on the radio. I know it's Morseville. They're talking about Frazier Road. Um, then one guy says, boy, he came down and he reamed our butt out for something, roads, I think. And the comment from the other person was, well, it's a good thing they don't own the roads. Well, that burned my butt because every taxpayer owns these roads. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna say anything and burn my butt enough that later on in the afternoon, I called Judy because again, they are 
public figures being paid by public money. And if this should not be happening, I would be fired from my job if I did things like that. So I just wanted to make sure that Judy spoke to somebody about it. I do trust Judy. I'm pretty sure she probably did go say something to somebody, but I want all of you to hear it. That it, it's just, it's, it's just, should not be coming from our employees. If they want to sit around the table at the town garage and talk crap about all of us, that's fine. But don't be doing it on the public radio. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, I will go to schedule. Just a little update for everybody. There will be a select board meeting next week, not two weeks, um, here at 5.30, March 18th. There will be a special select board meeting on April 1st at the Dew Hamill Pit. This is a uh, required by our permit meeting in person, a chance for the uh, public, the community to come and uh, hear a presentation and ask questions. And we'll start that at four o'clock at the Dewhamel pit. And then that will be, that uh, meeting will be recessed and then reconvened here at 5.30. That's on April 1st. So that's actually going to be, oh, the entire select board will be at that Dewhamel pit. We're hoping we'll have a quorum <clears throat> just out of curiosity. Pardon me? Do you need a form at that? I don't think you do. That is a good question, I actually. I didn't think we did either, but we warned it in case everyone wanted to know. I will be there, Jamie. Yep. Unless something else comes so up. <laughs> yeah. Is that an April Fool's joke? No. Oh, just <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's point, funny, though. though. <laughs> that is funny. So that's it for schedule that's coming up. Any question on the schedule? Yes, the first This is not like a site uh, visit. Right? Come on up to the microphone, uh, Tom. Sorry, yeah, Tom, go ahead. This isn't like a site visit. This is, is this a meeting there? Because at a site, if it's a site uh, meeting, site visit, yeah, you can't discuss things that are going on there. You can't ask questions, and you can't take questions. It's my understanding, Tom, as part of the permit, we need to hold an annual meeting at the site okay so it's, so not, it's, it's not there really like a site visit and this is a actual it's an informational meeting. meeting so we can ask questions and, and i said okay yeah that, all yeah. right that's that's the reply thank, thank you. you okay other business um i would move to go into executive session because i find a premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party or poorly place a town at a substantial disadvantage by disposing us negotiation strategy i have a motion do i have a second second all those in favor aye aye, aye. that would be unanimous Thank you move to go into coming. executive right. session to discuss the pending or probable litigation and prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include interim town manager Terry Johnson. I have a sec I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Richard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous, George. Mm -hmm. 